now, there's, there's been a lot of testosterone on stage tonight. A lot of testosterone. Maybe too much. What did you say we bring up a very funny lady? What do you think about that? Hell yeah! Yeah, about time, right? All right, your next comic. She hasn't been here in forever. I'm really glad she's here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Miss E.B. Hawk. Alright, I have to start out by being a dick. I hate doing this. It's pronounced Ebby. Oh, however, sorry. however, when I say it's like Debbie without the D, I get questions about when the surgery's <laughs> happening. Right? Um, no, but I so, um, but anyway. Um, so I've been thinking a lot about getting old lately. Alright, who's old in here? Um, so I'm 25, I figured now is the time to get a grip on how to age gracefully, right? Uh, I'm practicing. After a long, hard day, I have a hot soak. And now I'm buying wheat brand cereal for poop reasons. <laughs> um, but no, really, the thing that fascinates me about getting old is the shift in technology. I was thinking the other day about the first website I saw. Does anyone remember the very first website you saw? Pornography? Anyone? Um, so the first website I saw, I was probably seven years old, and our neighbors called us and they said, hey, do you have internet, or whatever we called it back then. And um, they said, we just made a home page, you should check it out. So my dad cranks out the internet machine, starts working the crank, you know, my, bro my brother and I are shoveling coal into the gaping maw that's gonna connect us with the World Wide Web. And uh, so we stand there for three, four minutes, well, the majesty unfurls. If anyone remembers, like some of the, the first one I saw, it went line by line, loaded, loaded. I was fascinated to find out what a home page is, and so it's loading and it unfurls what they've made for us. Um, it's a lime green background. It's the family's name. It's a picture of the family, and it's a caption saying who's in the picture. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the internet. So obviously I wasn't very impressed back then. It was fine. I had the benefit of taking baby steps. But back then, if you had told me the bullshit that we have on the internet today, I, it would have blown my mind. And I think it could have helped my life a lot, actually. Um, because, you know, these days you really don't have to leave your house for anything. Um, you can see a doctor. I'm not doing this well. Um, you, can see, you can see a doctor without leaving your house using the wonderful flattering medium and accurate medium that is a webcam, built-in webcam. Um, so you can see a doctor without leaving your house. But the thing that I think really would have helped my childhood is snack delivery subscriptions. I don't know if anyone has these, but they will deliver appropriate snacks for your family to your house every month, right? And I just think back, God, I just, you know, my family spent hours just traipsing through the aisles of the grocery store, trying to find appropriate snacks for my family, just hauling bags of Cheetos and cases of Dunkaroos for us to mindlessly eat so that no one ever had to cook or figure out what nutrition is. And, um, but those are, you know, the time that you spend in a grocery store, those are hours that I could have spent with my family. That's games of catch I could have played with my dad. That's conversations in a mall I could have had with my mom. Hours talking about why it's so hard to find clothes that fit my weird body, right? <laughs> um, so essentially what I'm saying is, if, let's see, if we had had snack subscription services when I was a kid, I could be a professional baseball player with a healthy body image. Yeah? Anyone? Anyone? Dreams? Dreams? Um, no, but, um, now what was I going to say? Um, oh yeah, but the thing, oh, so I'll, I'll be interested to see how I age with technology. Who knows what the hell we'll have when I'm 70 or 80 or whatever. But it seems to be that old people either completely shun technology, I kind of respect that, I get that, or um, they embrace it, but they embrace it in the stupidest way. Like, old people buy gadgets, like they are on the carousel of progress from Disney World. Like, they will buy an automatic salt shaker that you only have to use one hand for, thank God, finally, this hand can do whatever I want. <laughs> glasses that have a headlamp so they can finally read without having to lift your arm up and flick that light on and off. Um, or the clapper. We all know the clapper, right? Um, or another one, a woman, let's see, this was a couple weeks ago, a woman was 
gushing to me about how I should get an automatic wine opener. And she said, you know, it's, oh, I can't, what did she say? She said, I can't imagine how I would have guests over without it. You know, she said, she said, you know, all you have to do is just stick it on there, it does it automatically, don't worry about it, you're drinking in no time. And I thought to myself, if I'm so old that my arms are too decrepit to somehow open wine so that I can get drunk and forget about how terrible being old is, I will fucking Sylvia Plath myself that night, no questions asked. All right, that's all for me. Thank you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, that was funny Woo! stuff. Give it up for her. God damn. Please come back. Please come back. All right. Uh, your next comic, it's another one of those casts where you can see this guy just working on new stuff, making all the rooms in Richmond laugh. Give it up for Mr. Tom Creedy Masayo. Hi, thank you guys. Uh, good to see some of you walk back into the room. Not scared. <laughs> Austin lives off tip money. Um, hey, so look, I had a bad thing happen to me recently. Do you ever have to like break up with a friend of yours? Yes. Like you just have like you're you're too dumb. You're dragging me down. Like no more. I'm sorry. Like so, I was eating breakfast the other day, and I was like, it was leftovers from this cool Chinese restaurant I really like. And um, to be fair to my roommate, before we start this, what I was eating was fermented fish. Like, make no bones about that. But there were bones in the fermented fish. But anyway, so I offer something to my roommate, and he looks at it very intently. Good couple beats there. And he looks back at me, and he says, that's Chinese food. I was like, okay, cool, you're with me so far. <laughs> then he says, Chinese food is not for breakfast. <laughs> what does he think that all two billion people living in China eat in the fucking morning? <laughs> Probably not Indian. That's the worst laugh to get ever. Just don't do anything if you're gonna laugh like that. <laughs> this guy, like, he made, like, the onomatopoeia, like the Charlie Brown makes when he misses the football. <laughs> That's what he just did to me. It's E-U-A-G-U-H was what it was. Anyway. <laughs> uh, let's stick with the Asian thing, I guess. I went to a friend's house. Oh, it's not really a friend, a friend of a friend, anyway. This girl had all these Buddha statues all over the place, which is cool, but she had like fat Buddha and skinny Buddha. And it's like, those are not the same thing. Like you never go to someone's house and they have white Jesus and black Jesus on the wall. You don't even go to someone's house and they have mixed race Jesus on the wall. I would like to go to someone's house and they have Tiger Woods Jesus on the wall. Tiger Woods Jesus is my favorite Jesus. We are both secretly Asian. I'm secretly Asian. <laughs> it's like I'm Asian, but it doesn't matter. Like my mom has cool stories about riding elephants as a child, but no one gives a shit because I just look like a terrorist to them. <laughs> anyway, so my grandfather is Muslim. And I found that out recently. He's a Thai man, but he lives in Malaysia now. And um, so like after, he destroyed my mother's family and, you know, all that. <laughs> then he fled to Malaysia and mar he wanted to marry this Muslim woman. But, like, I asked my grandmother about it and she was like, your grandfather was never, never Muslim. He was always an atheist. So he had to convert. Because that's the law of the land, basically. It's like, he wants to marry this Muslim woman. He has to convert. So the truth of the matter, I guess, is that my grandfather is a Muslim but he's really only in it for the pussy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I, uh, me and my girlfriend broke up recently. That's tough, because now I have to start watching pornography again, which is a big bummer. Like, you know, like when you type in you, and then Google knows that the next word you wanted to type in was porn, and then you click on the first video, and it's terrible. Like, 
I just don't understand what they think I want. Because, like, you watch it, and the dude is not my fantasy. Like, that's not who I want to be, and that's not what I want to... I don't want to be Stone Cold Steve Austin destroying emotionally, philosophically, this woman on film. Like, I don't enjoy any element of that, okay? But it's like, what are my alternatives? Like, what else is out there, you know? Like, I can't g just, like, go over to the other website and watch a Japanese woman be used like a super soaker full of eels. <laughs> That's not better. I guess I'm just lost. Anyway, thank you guys. <laughs> Messiah, ladies and gentlemen, let him hear it. All right. Uh, man, I'm really bummed out. There's, all right, there's a lot of people outside right now, but I just want to make this announcement. Oh, make uh, the announcement slow. Okay, here's what we'll do. We're going to open up the door, because people got to know. People got to know. Here's the thing. Listen up, smokers. This show has been running for four years now, and uh, next show, November 12th, will be the four-year anniversary show. This is, won't be in the open mic. This is going to be just, like, killer. Just, like, it's going to be such a killer show. Four years. Me and, like, me and Austin are three years away from being common-law married. It's beautiful. We're that close. But you're next... Well, we can do that in Virginia now, right? Yo. Shit, girl. Damn. We're going to do that shit. But, ladies and gentlemen, your next comic, he's going to be on that show. This guy's one of my favorite people in Richmond comedy. He also runs the Comedy Night over at Pi. So check him out at Pi on Saturdays. But also, check him out on November 12th here at McCormick's Irish Pub for the four-year anniversary show. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen, for Mr. Mr. The Lovely, The Talented, Mr. Jacob McFadden! For four years, special show. Love this guy. He's great. He's gonna come up and do a bunch of brand new shit he's never tried before. You're gonna love it. This is a lot of fun. I love winter. Don't you guys love winter? Winter's a great time to be a comedian because you listen to 12 people with sinus infections come put a thing next to their mouth right before you go up. Isn't that fun? Winter's also fun because winter is the time of year where all women take on the same shape, and then when you take them home, it's like a present every time. Like, what am I gonna get? Are you skinny or are you severely overweight and covered in acne? That's a lot of fun. I was having sex with this Asian chick once. Uh, I say that like it was like a casual thing, but we were seriously committed to each other in a long relationship. Anyways, I was having sex with her in the ass. I mean, there was this little poop chick on my dick. So I picked it up and I just kind of flicked it. And I thought that was the end of it. But a little later, she was like, hey, you kind of stopped in the middle of that and you made a face. What was that about? And I thought, well, it's been a little while. I guess I could be honest. A little chip of poop on my penis, so I just gotta flip it into the corner. <laughs> she fucking freaked out. She was like, what do you mean you just flicked shit into the corner of the room? And I was like, hey, what do you mean you invited me into your ass when you had to go? It takes two to get a poop chip on my dick. <laughs> Isn't that a carpenter song? <laughs> I, uh... I also put his tongue out. I think I would've got a bell on that one. Uh... <laughs> I was watching, I, was, I wasn't feeling well the other day, so I decided to watch The Lion King. Because it was my favorite movie as a child. Because it combined my two favorite things as a child. The inherited flaws of dynasty governments and pack animals. Now we all remember The Lion King, so there's that great part where uh, Simba is chased out of his home to arguably a much better neighborhood. A lot more color, where he gets adopted by some gay dads. <laughs> and they teach him that song, Hakuna Matata, which means no worries for the rest of your days. And he sings this song, we see this, he sings this song literally from childhood into adulthood. And we know this because he's walking across a log singing the song, and he goes from Hakuna Matata to Hakuna, Hakuna Matata, which is fucking weird because that's a song he sang as a child and he sexed it up at the end. That's like if I was walking down the street as a 25-year-old man, I was like, the wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, all through the town. <laughs> yeah, it's good to try new stuff. Right, you get announces, this guy's great. 
I, uh, I, I work at a college now, so I hear a lot of retarded arguments. And the other day, a girl was outside my office door, and she said, hey, graffiti is protected under the First Amendment. It's what the founders wanted. <laughs> yup. Sure, that's exactly what the people who made their own country for the idea of personal property wanted. Jackasses drawing on it with aerosol paint, a concept they would be familiar with. I would love to be with George Washington when he looked down at that moment and his teeth would fall out. Because black people are free now and that's not what he wanted. It's not the document he approved of. All right, fuck you guys. Hey, hey guess what? The guy in the dollar bill was racist. He owned slaves. And he was bad with money. Isn't that ironic? <laughs> oh. I had to buy a lot of new pants, because my pants always fail in the same place, like right down here. Which is weird, because like if it was here, that'd be cool. Like, yeah, my dick's too big. But down here is where my balls are. And that's, that's not complimentary at all. Like, hey, yeah, my balls are tearing through the floor of my pants. Fucking new shit. Jesus Christ. Who's got a cute pussy, am I right? I, uh... The person who has vaping leave? I don't, the vaping thing is crazy. Are you vaping? Fuck no. Oh, good, right? Yeah, fuck those people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the vaping's ridiculous. The vaping is like the preteen approach to civil disobedience. <laughs> we can't smoke in bars anymore. Well, check this out. Oh, now everything smells like wet Werther's. <laughs> I'll show them all! <laughs> Holy fuck. I'll, uh, I'll end on this. I'll end on new stuff. That's always a good sign. Uh, I was at the grocery store the other day, and I was walking with my girlfriend, and we saw Lunchables. But Lunchables have rebranded themselves into Lunchables Uploaded. <laughs> the fuck is that? What executive was that that had, hey, you know what kids like? They like the internet. What do we call it? Lunchables uploaded. Hey, kids, buy this and get a free MP3 of Reese's. You're going to love it. All right, so write that one more. Don't sexy dance the wheels on the bus. And uh, generally just do stuff about women's vaginas and cracking open a cold pussy at the end of the day. That's what people like. That's what I'll do. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Jacob Fett. Please welcome back to stage, Jesse Jarvis. Jacob McFadden, check him out every Saturday, Comedy Pie. Give it up for him one more time, everybody. One more time. All right.